Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Ignatius L. Jackson CPA YouTube channel. Um, so, actually, by the next time you see this, we may end up rebranding this the Ignite Business Talks podcast. And so, we're considering launching a new podcast called the Ignite Business Talks podcast. Uh, we've been doing some Twitter spaces uh, that discuss that, and so that's something that we're considering doing in the future. And so, if you think that's a great idea, leave me a comment or uh, send me a note or something. And let me know if you think that would be a good idea for us to launch a new podcast called the Ignite Business Talks Podcast, where we talk about all things business related, um, not just taxes, but even operational type stuff, finance stuff, uh, personal finance, all that kind of stuff. We're gonna talk about a lot of business activities. And so let me know if you wanna talk about that, okay? Now, on to today's topic. Today's topic, we're gonna to talk about the short-term rental collapse. So I've been seeing a lot on Twitter, um, about the, in Instagram and everywhere else, about this short-term rental collapse. Basically, they're saying markets like where I live in Phoenix have seen a huge reduction in revenues from Airbnb, uh, VRBO, all that kind of stuff. And so they're talking about, hey, is this does this mean we're about to get flooded with a bunch of homes? So we're gonna talk about this. I'm gonna give you my viewpoint here in a second. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. All right, and we're back. So thanks for joining me today on our YouTube channel. Um, so today we are talking about the short-term rental collapse. All right, and so if you think it's gonna be a collapse, I want you to comment, let me know your thoughts. Um, the short-term rental market is taking a huge hit for sure. I think everyone can agree the bookings are way down in general, okay? Unless you're in a key destination area, like by an ocean, beachside type property or in the mountains, ski resorts, that kind of thing, right? Um, those are still doing pretty good. At least seasonally, they're doing well. But everywhere else is struggling right now for short-term rentals, um, especially here in Phoenix. And so, you know, one thing that really enlightened me on this is I took a look over a one-month period at the number of rentals available still for the same weekend and even the same day booking, okay? And there were thousands of rentals still available. So that was my first sign where I'm like, holy crap, we may be in trouble. Now granted, Phoenix normally is very tough in the summer for short-term rentals and travel period because it's hot as hell here, all right? Let's just put it frankly, uh, in the summertime. So not a lot to do outside of like staying inside, um, you know, going, getting in your car, going inside to your hotel room. And that's really it. You're not really gonna do much activities outdoor, which is one of the reasons why people end up coming to Phoenix is we have a lot of great outdoor activities, especially during the winter time frame. So uh, generally speaking, we're not gonna have that much activity here. Now, granted right now, up north is very popular here in Arizona, like Flagstaff, Prescott, Sedona. Those places are very popular because they still are pretty cool at night. Um, the daytime sometimes gets into the 70s, sometimes the 80s, but definitely not hundreds usually. And so we have a lot of people that will go up north right now um, and do things that way. So that's another great um, thing about Phoenix is we have a lot of different stuff, right? Um, and we're close to a lot of different stuff. So we could be to the beach in five hours. We could be, you know, um, to the mountains in two hours. We could be to the great place of Sedona in a couple hours. So a lot of great options, uh, Vegas, you know, four hours away. So a lot of great opportunity. But anyways, I digress. Okay, so the short-term rental collapse, all right? Is it really gonna mean that we're going to have a flood of these rental properties hit the market, people trying to sell them? It depends on how they did their underwriting, in my opinion. So if they were smart and they did their underwriting based on a long-term rental scenario, then they should be okay. They could basically convert it to a long-term rental and they would still be okay, right? 
Um, however, if they were doing their underwriting based on a short terminal analysis, meaning they didn't kind of expect, oh, I might not make a short terminal for real long term, then, or I need to make sure I'm getting like 20,000 a month in revenue instead of 5,000 a month in revenue or whatever the case might be, right? For a long terminal versus short terminal. If you, that's how you're doing your underwriting, then you're probably up, you know what, without a paddle. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, th those are gonna be tougher. Okay, so I think it's gonna be a mixed bag. I think we're gonna have some people who are going to have to sell, and then we're gonna have some people who can just convert it. So one of the things that, you know, cause I actually had a short term rental uh, for a little bit, but I got rid of it, and I actually converted it into a mid term rental, okay? Um, so I, I'm kind of out of the short term rental game here for a second, although I'm looking at potentially um, doing a couple in Wichita, Kansas, because again, I did my same analysis and I looked you know, at each weekend for a few weeks. And I'm like, there's only 15 places available each weekend. Um, and even during the week, same kind of scenario. There's not very many places that are available, um, you know, uh, during the week or on the weekend. And so that tells me that they're getting booked um, in that area. And I have a, a friend of mine who has a lot of houses over there. So we're going to convert a couple of them into short term rentals and maybe give it a try and kind of see where things go. Um, so I'm looking basically for short term rentals. I'm looking at stuff outside of Arizona, uh, outside of Phoenix, because we are just oversaturated. And I think that's a key consideration to think about, like how saturated is your market? And, you know, I would not be putting a new short term rental into service in Phoenix right now. Um, if you have a furnished property, your best bet to me is like a midterm rental where you're doing like corporate housing. Uh, or relocation, um, you're doing travel nurses, you're doing uh, students if you're near a university um, where people need some housing, right? Maybe they don't wanna live in the dorms. So there's a lot of different ways you can take a furnished property and make some good returns on there. Um, not quite as good as short-term returns were for the last couple of years, but they're still better than long-term rental returns, typically speaking. Uh, because you can kind of add a little bit of value by doing a furnished property that you're renting instead of being unfurnished. So there's, there's a higher rate that you get. And so that's what I've kind of converted most of my properties into at this point is more midterm rentals or long-term rentals. So, but yeah, I mean, it's anybody's guess, right? I don't think anybody has a golden, uh, you know, egg or whatever, uh, an, an eight ball that kind of tells them like exactly what's going to happen. Um, and so it's anybody's guess what's going to actually happen, but I, I think it's going to be a mixed bag. Like I said, I, I think some people are going to be, you know, hurting, uh, money wise come the end of this year, probably once they, so a lot of people are probably waiting it out for the summertime because people don't always travel to certain destinations in the summer, like Phoenix, for example. But if it doesn't rebound come winter time, there's probably going to be a lot of houses that hit the market. Um, that said. Uh, depending on where the interest rates are at that time, it could result in, you know, some a lot of investors trying to dig in and pick them up for long term rentals, or it could result in uh, families trying to get get them for the personal residence. So I, who knows? I mean, who knows? But if the interest rates stay high where they are right now, that there might be trouble for the short term rental people to be able to sell their properties, especially with how much some of these guys invested in those properties they might take some pretty huge losses. They might, they might have to take a, a big loss. Um, and unfortunately that just may be <laughs> what happens. Um, however, I, I think people are gonna try their best to I think shift and, and pivot a little bit, maybe convert it to a long-term rental, like I said, or do a midterm rental, something like that. Um, because yeah, the, the short-term rentals are definitely, they're slowing, they're definitely slowing. And so, yeah, um, keep your eye out for this. Um, you know, I don't have much else uh, I don't have much other else data or anything like that. It's, this is more kind of an anecdotal um, type of episode here, but uh, just wanted to kind of, you know, hey, <laughs> think think about it. I mean, don't, I wouldn't, my recommendation would not be to go into a short-term rental right now unless you know for a fact that it's going to be very popular. You know, you're in a very popular area that doesn't have enough places. It's not oversaturated and it has good rental rates and people still come there frequently and maybe there's no hotels 
you know, there's not enough hotels to kind of take care of all the travel. Um, you know, that's another issue that Phoenix has is we have a ton of hotels here and uh, even extended stay places. And so we're competing, you know, uh, individual small business owners are competing basically with those big boys. And so it becomes tough. So but anyways, um, just some thoughts to kind of think about and consider. And um, so I also want to kind of make sure, you know, to subscribe, like, comment, all that great stuff, right? Uh, especially in regards to this topic. I'm very curious to see what other people are thinking about in the space. So leave me a comment. Let me know what you think um, is going to happen. I, I, I love data. So even if it's anecdotal data, it, it, you know, just a lot of viewers and listeners kind of giving me their, their perspective that maybe do short term rentals. Um, you know, I think it's, it would be helpful to kind of understand and know what other people, other people are feeling and what other people are thinking about. Okay. So, well, thanks everybody for tuning in. This has been another wonderful episode of the Ignatius L. Jackson CPA YouTube channel, likely about to be the Ignite Business Talks podcast in the near future. So go ahead and stay tuned. Let me know if you like that idea of converting this into the Ignite Business Talks podcast. Um, so if, by the way, yeah, if you don't know, um, uh, just on a side note, uh, we did recently change our firm name to be Ignite Accounting LLC. That's the firm that I own that we operate under now. Um, and so Ignite Accounting LLC is a new firm name. So that's kind of where the Ignite Business Talks comes from. Um, and a little bit story behind the name Ignite. Um, it's actually a derivation of my name. So my name is Ignatius and Ignite is a derivation of Ignatius. And so that's kind of how we came up with that name. Um, just kind of give you a little bit of that storyline. So hope everybody likes all that and uh, we'll talk to you some more later. Peace.